Hey guys, this is Cam for 15 and I'm back at it with another video for you guys. And this is another Dragon Ball Super manga chapter review. And this chapter essentially is the continuation from last month's chapter of the battle between Goku and Moro. And this is going to be the aftermath, well not the aftermath, but the continuation of this with the aftermath and will Vegeta show up? Well... We know that he shows up later, but yeah, so anyways, I'm going to talk about this chapter, give my thoughts on the chapters about some of the plot points, and then yada, yada, yada. If you guys have seen my videos in the past, boom. Anyways, this is Dragon Ball Super Chapter 60, Miris's Miscalculation. So, um, Miris, he eventually says that, um, you know, like, just wait a moment, why, what is Goku doing? Why is he, like, going full power? And essentially, Whis tells him it's like it seems like he's changed his strategies, and both combatants will be fighting at the, their full power. Now, I personally don't think Moro is fighting at his full power. I think he's still, you could say, holding back and touring with Goku. They charge up and, and stuff like that, so they're both charging up. Um, I will say this, like I do mention. Um, and it's funny because throughout this chapter, Ultra Instinct Goku does talk. I don't know if it's just me, but I actually personally liked it when, you know, when Goku, whenever he turned into Ultra Instinct, um, he just didn't say anything. All you hear is just him, like, screaming and stuff like that. And that's really it. Or him doing, like, ah! You know, stuff like that. I, I don't know. So anyways, their auras, they end up clashing. And um, Piccolo and I think Gohan, they make mention of the fact that their auras are clashing because and it's wicked strong. Um, so then we get this really awesome, you know, scene where they're just like charging at each other. Um, Goku de kind of just, I guess, by his scream and just the sheer power exerting from his power, uh, uh, from his body, um, is able to... Um, Push Moro away. Um, then Moro does like some, like I guess you could say some death ball attack. Um, Goku kicks it away. He starts fighting. Um, and he's starting to get the upper hand on Moro. He kicks him. He gives a good kick to him in the gut. But then Moro eventually isn't faced. He grabs Goku's leg. And then he, I guess he does, which is a typical thing that I guess the last few villains have been doing. Or the last few antagonists have been doing to Goku is... Doing the Broly smash thing, or the Hulk smash thing, where he grabs him by the leg, and then he just starts smashing him around the place. Now, um, Moro only got him one time. Goku later counters that. Um, he kicks Moro away, and then he starts firing key blast at Moro. Moro's blocking, and then all of a sudden, Moro just, you know, breaks through the key blast and charges in, like, honestly, a god of hell. Um... It was a pretty crazy, like, you know, scene. I'm not showing any of the manga panels um, because, one, I don't want to get copyright struck by um, Chueisha um, because I know in the past they've been actually copywriting strike, you know, channels when it comes to showing manga panels unless you're, like, you're very verified by them. I'm not verified by them, so I'm just going to talk about, you know, what I'm seeing. I'm not going to show any panels. I'm, and right now I'm just looking at the panels and stuff like that and going over the chapter. So then Goku blocks the punch when Moro comes in. They get into a little, you know, fist fight, and then they finally lock hands, and then this is when they start, you know, charging and stuff like that. We cut back to Beerus' world, and Beerus is like, look, Goku, you can't keep doing this. How long can you keep the form, you know, fighting at full power? Then Whis says, even if you had followed your advice to conserve Stanima, um... Maintaining Ultra Instinct sign for longer, I had my doubts that he could have made it this much headway against Moro when Whis is basically kind of saying, like, I'm just shocked that he's actually holding his own against Moro for now. Um, so Goku gets some few more shots on Moro, and he says, like, eat this. The next thing you know, Moro escapes from the dust cloud, and essentially Moro's like, perhaps I approached you too cautiously after all. And he says... And essentially, he starts talking to like, well, if this is going to be your, if this is your true full power, then huh, sorry, but you're not going to beat me. Which further moments to go to show that Ultra Instinct Omen against uh, Moro isn't going to be enough. Now, 
who knows what's go- how Mordor's going to be because they made mention of it a few times in this chapter how essentially his body's like you know in a figure of speech is like made out of steel because it's really thick and even Goku like it says he's like what is his body even made of so obviously it goes to show that you know Mordor's been training God knows how long he was training for those three months or slash getting stronger by absorbing all that energy and stuff like that. Then um, Whis mentions like, does Moral strain exceed your expectations, Marius? And Marius replies saying yes, to think that he grew this powerful. Um, again, you know, they didn't figure, you know, they figured Moral would be powerful, but not this powerful to the point he's giving ultra instinct omen Goku problems. Um, he also, uh, um, he also does say that I expect that Goku sensed that as well. Hence this gamble of tapping into his full potential. Um, and then Wee says, um, Saiyans are known to exhibit untold power when they're backs against the wall, especially Goku, which we all know. We've seen Goku from Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and then even Super, you know, go beyond his own limits from that respective time period. Um, and also we even says Vegeta. Then it cuts to Planet Yard Drop where Vegeta's still training. And... We, find, we finally get a conversation that Vegeta finally mastered the technique he's been trying to master the last couple of chapters. Um, and then Pyrobara, he starts saying like, well done indeed, Vegeta. Um, and you mastered it in pretty much a very short time. So Vegeta sense the fact that Earth is still, you know, in one piece. Um, he's happy the fact that he'll be able to, you know, join the battle soon. Um, he asks Pyrobara to use instant transmission to teleport him to Earth, but... Hirabara cannot because we actually find an interesting tidbit about the um, Yard Radians is the fact that um, they are forbidden from using the instant transmission to teleport or travel to other planets. So they can't do that. But they can do it if they know a person's signal of somebody um, somebody they have met in the past, which they've met Goku in the past. So it goes to show that Goku, you know, knows Pyrabara and the other Yard... Well, he knows the other Yard Jar- Yardradians, but it uh, goes to show that Goku has met Pyrobara. Um, so, um, you know, Vegeta's like, oh, so you mean, you're meaning Kakarot? And then he's like, yeah, I mean Goku. Um, but he can't sense um, Goku's energy. And the reason why is because obviously he's using um, Ultra Instinct, which is the state the state of being in like a, in the God's realm. And Vegeta does make him make that sense by saying now he says this in the manga word for word he said that fool must be using ultra instinct and only gods can sense that godly energy or chi um i guess i kind of have a little well a little bit of a interesting issue i just gotta make about this point of that comment vegeta said and even vegeta says like oh seems like ultra instinct didn't work for you i'm like first things first i don't know if i remember um, but how would Vegeta know if Goku was using Ultra Instinct at that direct point in time? Like, he could be using... Like, it would have made more sense if he said, well, he probably must be using Super Saiyan God or Super Saiyan Blue. Um, that's why you can't sense him, because that's, you know, God Energy. Um, or God Key. Um, it still makes no sense how Vegeta, like, he just says, oh, he's probably using Ultra Instinct. I'm like, you don't know that. I'm like, this isn't like in the Majin Buu saga where there's a crystal ball and you can see the fight of what's going on. I just found that a little bit weird. Yeah, am I being a little bit nitpicky? Yes, but still, it makes no sense in terms of context because how would Vegeta know he's using um, Ultra Instinct? Um, Then the um, Galactic Patrolman asks the fact that, well, uh, we can't, you know, travel by my ship because it will take us 10 days. That'll be way, Earth will be gone by then. Then Vegeta asks Pyrobara to teach him, you know, the instant transmission. And Pyrobara is like, really, right now? And, you know, Vegeta's like, look, I can use it and I'll get there faster, much faster then. So we cut back to the Goku versus Moro fight. And this is where Moro's starting to get the upper hand. Goku goes in for a punch. Moro just barely, well, yeah, barely dodges it. And then Goku gets this really, you know, knee, you know, shot to the gut. Um, and this is when he's starting to wear down and he's getting beat up and then even go on and Piccolo, they're starting to mention that, um, you know, his attacks aren't landing no more. Me, Moro starts making fun of the fact like, oh, where's that speed you once had? It's almost reminding me of the Frieza fight 
in the terms of the fact that, you know, Frieza, he was like, oh, you caught me by surprise with your speed, but now it's not working no more. What's going on? Um, so at this point, Goku's just getting pummeled. Like even his, you know, the top part of his orange gi is starting to get all ripped up and Goku knows he's starting to reach his limits. And even Moro mentions like, look, you've reached your limits. You know, it's, you're done now. And Moro says, that said, consider me shocked that you amass so much power. So like, Moro stating that like, mm, I will give you credit. It's shocking that you gained this much power in such a short period of time. Um, and Goku replies by saying, you don't get to decide when this is over. I'm not done yet. So Goku charges, I guess, to his full power of Ultra Instinct in these hat and it has like these, I guess you can say these sparks around his aura. Um, he goes in for the charge and Mirrors makes a mention saying this won't work. By relying on the sheer power alone like this, he can't make the most of Ultra Instinct strength. Goku gets an elbow in. And I look, and Goku, he does a nice little smirk. And then Moro does, I guess, the thing that, you know, a few characters we've seen in the series, well, some characters we've seen in the series have, which are mouth beams. I know Nappa and, the, Nappa and Raccoon were two people that were able to do the mouth beam technique. Um, he fires the mouth beam technique at a close range at Goku. And Weiss replies saying, and sadly, it doesn't look like we'll be witnessing any miracles today. You know, I guess another dig at the Resurrection F arc or any of the previous arcs where, you know, it looks like our heroes are going to be down for the count, but then, boom, they come in. Um, and then Mira says it wasn't meant to go like this. And then Beerus, he just makes a, another comment saying, look, I'm still starving. I'm hungry. Can you make me something to eat, Whis? So, yeah. And then, you know, um, Mira's talks to Whis and he's like, at this rate, the Earth and so many other planets, they're going to be... And then this is when we kind of get the confirmation, even though, there are, well, we get the confirmation of why Beerus and Whis aren't really doing anything in this arc, or if anything, they haven't been doing nothing in the series since Battle of Gods, really. And Whis gives a statement saying, Mirrors the birth and death of the planet is simply part of the great and long cycle of the universe. Excessive meddling on our part would affect the natural flow of these matters which ne not necessarily is a good thing and he's refuting to the point to mirrors that listen we cannot get involved whatsoever um i understand and mirrors replies been saying like look i understand that much but and um we then later reply saying what's more only the likes of lord beers and the lord of lords in other words the supreme kai's um can decide such things um it is not for us angels to do anything so like i said earlier we refuting the fact that listen the gods of destruction and the Supreme Kai's, if they feel like they need to get involved into a situation, they can do that on their own free will. We, on the other hand, cannot do that because that is unjust and that's against, you know, our respective angel law. Um, and he also tells Mirrors, like, never forget that. Now, could we see maybe at the end of this arc where Mirrors actually goes against Weiss's word and he gets involved, which, you know, would eventually, I guess you could say, erase him from existence because he does that, it would actually be pretty interesting. I haven't seen anybody bring that point up. I feel like maybe Miris, if some, if the Vegeta thing doesn't end up working, I think maybe they could end up having Miris come down and getting involved to give, make Goku and Vegeta find that, I guess, extra, you know, way in our seed and opening they can use to beat Moro. It cuts back to the Moro Goku fight and Goku, he's just getting absolutely obliterated. He eventually deforms from Ultra Instinct sign into his base form. Moro comes down and gives him another kick to the gut and to the point he's just like honestly stepping on him. Um, and even Goku, I mean Gohan and Piccolo, they mentioned like he lost the Ultra Instinct aura and Mer Moro, he says, that's quite enough fun for now. Yes, says, I think it's about time I still are consuming your energy. Um, and it's looking like... Um, Moro's going to suck up, you know, well, no homo, no, no homo pause. Um, he's going to, you know, suck up the energy from Goku's body. And then all of a sudden, Android 17 and 18 get involved. They get into the fight and they eventually refer to the fact to Moro, like, look, we're androids and you cannot sense our energy. What I did find funny when I was first reading this is when Moro does say like artificial life forms to think this planet possessed such advanced technology. It's funny because it takes me back to the Saiyan Saga. 
and even a little bit of the Nam on the Namek of the Namek saga when Vegeta came across Gohan, um, from the fact that um, you know, especially with the whole Dragon Ball Raider, I find it's hilarious how you know the Saiyans, you know, back then said, "Hmm, it's interesting how freaking Earth Earthlings have such advanced technology for their time being." You know, it, I I just found that hilarious, and the fact that morals were fruiting. You know, a point that was brought back so many, like, years ago in the Dragon Ball timeline, it's like, huh, it's interesting that, you know, this planet has, you know, crazy, you know, um, technology. So, I guess you can thank Dr. Jiro for that. But they're kind of modified humans not and stuff like that. So, Vegeta's using instant transmission, and Vegeta uses instant transmission. It works, but he ends up in a trash can. Um, so I did find that funny, so I'm guessing that's probably what Goku was going through, just using it. He'd probably teleport to different places and stuff like that. Um, and stuff like that. Um, a Yardranian says, you're doing it wrong, Vegeta. You gotta lock into the target's spirit. And, you know, Vegeta says, like, look, I only need to do this once. Um, I'm fine if I can ever do it again. And then, you know, they eventually, him and Pyrobar eventually sense Goku's spirits, and, you know, Pyro Bar even says, why did it, like, suddenly show up again? Um, and then, again, may, Vegeta makes the point he lost Ultra Instinct. Again, like I said, makes no sense. How would he know he used Ultra Instinct in the fight? Um, the fool must have let lost tomorrow. And that's what he goes on to say. Now, Pyro Bar offers to use his instant transmission to take Vegeta back. But Vegeta's like, listen, let me try this on my own. I want to do this technique on my own. Um, and he thanks Pyrobara for everything he's done. But Pyrobara, I guess in a way of respect, he gives him back his, um, um, Saiyan armor gear and stuff like that. And Pyrobara says, you know, good job in enduring our brutal training and hopefully you fight with confidence. Um, Vegeta, he ends up using the instant transmission and even Pyrobara is like, yes, he's on his way to earth or his spirits on earth. And, you know, he, Pyrobara is even shocked from the fact that, you know, um, it's incredible that he was only able to use the instant transmission technique in such a short period of time. So, I guess you can say, I guess he mastered, well, not mastered it, but he used it, I guess. Well, I don't know if you could say he mastered it. Um, you know, uh, maybe he mastered it much faster than Goku did. That's, I guess, interesting and stuff like that. And then the Yardradians talk about how much of a prodigy Vegeta might be. Um... And even Pyrobara says, like, yeah, and since he may be a prodigy, that is really born of hard work. So it comes back to the refuting the point of the fact that, uh, you know, him and Goku, Vegeta and Goku are prodigies. Excuse me for a second, guys. Okay, guys, sorry for that. Um, anyways, we cut back to the fight with the androids and Moro. They give a kick to Moro's gut, but he kind of just flicks him away, but just, like, I guess flexing on him, like, doing that. <clears> hmm. <throat> And then they kind of go back. The androids are questioning, like, what is this guy made of? And essentially, they do one of their strongest attacks. It has no effect on Moro. And even Moro's like, well, it sucks that you guys are pretty strong. And it's a shame that I can't steal your energy and stuff like that. Um, and Android 18, she mentions, like, what the heck? It's like we're fighting a lump of steel. And even 17 mentions, like, we're hitting him with our heaviest attacks, but it's doing nothing. Go on does mention the fact that Piccolo should... As Piccolo, like, should we join them and help them? Piccolo, um, smartly says, well, we can't do nothing. He just absorbs our energy. Um, you know, that would only give more, more energy and make him stronger. So, it's looking like things are getting pretty grim. And even Goku's like, well, I didn't think it would turn out like this. Um, reminds me again of the Cell Saga back when, you know, he thought, um, when the Cell Juniors appear, and he was like, well, I didn't think it would turn out like this. Well, mm, simple. You didn't have to have go on fight at first. Then Vegeta tra teleports, and then all of a sudden, you know, Vegeta is right there, and he is finally back on Earth. Goku tells him, like, you know, wait, you just used instant transmission and stuff like that. Um, and even Vegeta's like, look, look what you, what, I guess Ultra Instinct proved nothing, did it, huh? Um, and yeah, so, and the Vegeta also reaffirms, like, listen, I'm not stealing your instant transmission or your technique. I was only using it for that one time. And he, and he mentions like, well, it don't matter because I learned a far superior technique on my own. 
And then Vegeta kind of tells 18 and 17 to kind of back off and let him fight. And then, um, you know, Moro's like, Vegeta. <laughs> you know, the whole typical thing. And then Vegeta says, I see that her time apart hasn't done a thing to fix that joke of a face you called. Call, call a face, Moro. Do you enjoy tormenting the weak? Um, again, and he's just kind of just, like I said, he's kind of just back talking and being the cocky, arrogant Vegeta we all love and know, who talks a lot of smack before his fight. And sometimes he doesn't back it up, but I think in this time, I think in this case, he could back it up. Um, and stuff like that. Now, Moro, he does make the fact that he does say that, and I've grown wary of plants that cannot provide, you know, fighters to match me. Um, and then Vegeta says, oh, there's no cause for concern there. Vegeta turns into a Super Saiyan Blue, and um, Gohan does mention he's using the Super Saiyan Blue form, and he used in the Tournament of Power, what's changed? And they don't really know, um, and Vegeta also says, you want someone stronger than you? You found him, in which he's pointing at me. And then the manga chapter ends off with Vegeta charging in for an attack on Moro, and then that's it. So we don't get the next chapter till June 20th, and yeah. What I thought about this chapter, it was, you know, it was a decent, it was a good chapter. Um, the We got the conclusion of the Goku Mirror on Moro fight. Obviously, Ultra Instinct Omen isn't strong to beat, isn't strong enough to beat Moro yet. Um, now, a lot of people are speculating, well, Vegeta could, will Vegeta will more than likely maybe be the, you know, final, you know, you know, the, the hero of this arc where he takes out the, the big bad. Um, who knows? Um, that could be something. Um, another thing to mention is, um, remember, 7-3 is still, you know, around. So we don't know what he could be doing um, next. Um, it is interesting to see where they're going to go with this. And I'm going to be very interested to see what that new technique Vegeta learned from the Yard Rats. I know Tori Taro. He's probably going to have to use him. Him and Toriyama might have to need to use his mouth up to come up with something. We're going to find out what this is. Um, and also, um, it's going to be interesting to see because, you know, um, will Vegeta do the same type of strategy where, you know, like Goku, where he is fast enough where he can dodge the, you know, the energy, I guess, absorption, you know, a, a technique that Moro's doing? We're just going to find out. Um, we're going to see how much stronger Vegeta has gotten in, uh, I believe, the three months. Since they last fought Moro. So yeah. So other than that guys. That's all I got to say for this manga chapter. I thought this manga chapter was good. And I can't wait for June 20th. That's the only thing that sucks about the manga. The fact that we have to wait every freaking month for the next chapter. But hey we get 45 pages in one chapter. I'll tell you one thing. It's <laughs> it's much more better than I say. No. My Hero Academia. It's killing it right now. But it's much more better than getting like a weekly My Hero Academia for 17 with like 17 pages and it's like oh you gotta wait next week for it or maybe in two weeks but still you know we still do get a lot of content in these Dragon Ball Super mangas I can't wait to see the next Dragon Ball Super manga chapter things are heating up and next chapter we're gonna get Moro versus Vegeta so we're gonna see how Vegeta fares next month against Moro and will things be grim um and like I said will Miris Possibly, you know, go against Whis's word and try to intervene. I have a feeling like he might actually go that route if things start to turn grim. If, say, you know, Moro just, I guess, beats Vegeta, which, who knows at this point. If he does, I could possibly see Moro getting involved and in trying to turn the tide of the battle. Even if it's for a second, like, I'm just giving you this opening, Goku and Vegeta. And yeah, so other than that, guys, that's all I gotta say. And I'm gonna get out of here, so I'll catch you guys on the next video. So tell them, guys, if you like the video, leave a like. If there's a comment you want to put in the comment section regarding this chapter, um, put it in the comment section. Also, hit that subscribe button to get more Dragon Ball Super manga chapter reviews every month for when they release um, stuff like that. So tell them, guys, again, get an eye over. Hopefully, you guys have a safe and great day. Peace.